Hi, I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation, and the question is, can lying ruin your marriage? Wow, would we be in big trouble if that were the case, wouldn't we? You know, there's hardly anybody in the world who doesn't lie sometimes. Oftentimes, people lie to protect the other person. Other people lie to hide things that they feel guilty about. There's a lot of degrees of lying. There's a lot of types of lying. And there are some people who are so sensitive about being lied to that they forget that they themselves have told some lies. So what's really going to be useful for you is to understand the origins of lying, why people lie in the first place. Now, a lot of people who have read my books, either Breaking the Cycle or Lessons for a Happy Marriage, have found all kinds of useful information that really explains a lot of you what you might call the bad behaviors in marriage, few of which are so destructive that they can ruin your marriage. And a lot of people who are listening to these videos, so by all means you should subscribe, are also learning these things. They're important things because the Western world right now is so confused about marriage. They, they talk about protocols when you go to marriage therapy, but they don't have any real ones. They don't have solid principles. So we're trying to change all that at the Marriage Foundation, quite frankly. So let's get to this lying thing. Why do people lie at all? And it goes back to something that you learned yourself when you were in high school. There's this little thing called self-preservation. It is the drive, I call it the drive to survive. There is no living thing, not any cell that does not have the drive to survive. It sort of distinguishes life from inanimate. If it has a drive to survive, you know it's alive. Our bodies are comprised of trillions of cells. Every single cell, imagine this, every single cell has a single purpose to survive. It's got a subordinate purpose too, which is to procreate in order for there to be more, because more means protection, doesn't it? So you have all these trillions of cells. Now you, and you're not a cell, and you're not your mind. And the mind isn't cell-based either. The brain is, but the mind is something that is tangible, it's real, but it's kind of a spiritual entity, you might say, the mind. Even a greater spiritual entity is you. You're a soul. You have a mind, you carry that mind with you, you have a body, short period of time in the scope of things. I mean, think how long it takes just for light to travel from the sun to the earth. The, the universe is vast and the information that we're gaining slowly that is giving us a sense of things is starting to open up the realm of spirituality. There was a long period of time that still exists now that says spirituality isn't real, it's abstract. And this is what the world runs with. This is sort of a, a key aspect of Western psychology is that this spiritual component isn't real. It's imaginative but it isn't imaginative. And I'm going to explain to you what is the most important of these non-imaginative spiritual components. It's love. Love 
cannot be cognized with the senses. It's purely spiritual in nature, yet it is the most real, and you could check in your own heart, it is the most real thing that there is. We cannot live without it. So what happens is we as a soul take residence in a body, you might say. We, we build the body, but we take residence in this body. The body is not spiritual. I mean, it is in the purest sense, because what isn't? But in terms of our life, it is a material possession, the body. The body comprised of trillions of living cells, all with the drive to survive, meets the soul in the mind. The mind is the battleground. The soul is pure love, pure existence, pure consciousness. But the body is pure material. The body will never know spiritual. It only knows survival. So it's telling the mind constantly, you got to protect us, you got to protect the body, you got to protect the mind, the brain, it means, and anything that poses a potential danger creates within us, within the mind, a fight flight response. You remember this fight or fly. What causes that? A threat, a perceived threat. This is very important, a perceived threat. Because we all perceive different things as threatening. Some of us go to work and if we see the boss, we feel threatened. And if the boss says, did you do that? Our first response is our filter comes up and it wants to get out of trouble, even if there wasn't any trouble but just how the boss may have framed that question. Your spouse and you are the same. Now, if your child was threatened by someone and you had to lie for your child, you would in a heartbeat. So it's an unconscious reaction based on very deep subconscious memories that collect into deciding what your mind perceives as a threat. So your husband or wife will feel threatened. It is a good idea if you are the liar that before you open your mouth with your reaction, which will be fast, because the untrained mind reacts fast. You know, we have courses for both men and for women when your marriage is in trouble, and if your marriage is in trouble, you may consider taking the course. It's not expensive. In the course, the very first thing that I teach is about your mind. It includes what we just talked about now because you have to learn how to master your mind so your inner reactions, which are habitual, turn into outer reactions, which are habitual, which get you into trouble. So whether you're the liar or the person being lied to, you need to take control over your mind. You need to learn how to work around these things, but more importantly, to take control over your mind. You know, it seems lost to us. The reason we get married in the first place is to be happier. You have the right to be happy all the time. 100% of the time. And you have this little gift given to you so that you can achieve that happiness all the time. That little gift is called free will. When you exercise it properly, which means to be happy, to be in joy, to be in tune with yourself, the soul, then you will be. You might say, I say it, 
that marriage is sort of the safety place in life where there's no threats. There are no outer threats. There's just you and your spouse. So you can have this glorious life of ever increasing happiness every single day till the end of life and ever expanding joy. How can you argue with that? All you need is to learn how to master your own mind, which it's just common sense that you should, but we're not taught these things. These are very cutting edge ideas, ancient cutting edge ideas. So that's it. So lying should not impact your marriage. Now it could impacts many things, but you can learn how to work around and to handle things. As long as you're building the foundation of your marriage where it belongs, in the highest strata of your consciousness, which is love. We have to learn these things. I used to be a divorce mediator, and I helped many, many people get divorces. And I thought, why are these people getting divorced? They even look like they should be together. And then finally, I switched my practice over to helping people save their marriages, improve their marriages. I couldn't use the Western psychological ideas to help them because no one in the Western psych community, and trust me, I knew lots and lots of marriage counselors back then, it was over 20 years ago, and they all talked about solving problems, learning how to argue better, learning how to choose when we lie and don't lie. To me, it was very stupid. And so I had to reinvent the wheel, and that's what we've done at the Marriage Foundation. So explore what we have. Take a look at our website, See, there's a lot of free things, and there's things that you pay for as well. I want to help you with your marriage. I want to help you achieve the gold, the jewel, ever-increasing happiness, ever-expanding love. You are deserving of it. You are entitled to it. It's a birthright. It was given to us. Why not learn? How to have that. Thank you for spending time with me. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. God bless and take care. Thank you.